Okay, so here we are leaving Juniper Bog. We're taking the what is now the Groom Trail. And we're going to head uh, head home. I'm going to record the whole drive here so you guys can see some of the traditional hunting, fishing, trapping territory that we would uh, go on crossing over Godel's Brook. And like I said in the last video, where where that brook bubbles out from underneath Walesback Mountain, that is some of the coldest water you'll ever taste. It's so cold, I promise you, it's going to hurt your teeth. Just breaking out now on uh, High Mash. Heading in the easterly, northeasterly direction. Did a lot of uh, walking around and tramping through here over the years. Cross country skiing. I used to ski up here uh, once a day. So uh, almost daily I was up in this country. Growing up, you know. The trail. The trail's getting rotten. This, is, this was recorded on Saturday, the same day that Sean and I had that boil up and had some smoked capelin or, or dried capelin with uh, I think I um, might have had some molasses onto it but you can see that I was down this trail uh, today and today is Tuesday so just three four days later and it, it's almost gone now you know uh, spots you can only is only wide enough for a skidoo to get through the whole trail is, uh, is almost brown now. You're just picking your way along the sides. Now, when I we, when we left Juniper Bog, there was a trail from Juniper that would take you right on down to uh, Walesback Bog. Then when we come to High Mash, there was a trail there to take you right on down. When we get to the turn over here, uh, well just before it, there's a, there's a trail right here. That will take you down there. And when we get on this 90 degree turn, right to your right hand right now, right there. Yeah, that would be Willie Simon. Oh, Willie Simon's Trail. We're on Willie Simon's Trail right now. The, the Groom Trail kind of followed the old trail, you know? And we're just slowly taking our time and picking our way up through the section. But this, this is an area, a lot of times if we came in here hunting, we'd either go up Willie Simon's Trail and come back... Uh, down Harrow, Harrow Simons Trail, or depending on the wind, sometimes we go up Harrow Simons Trail and come back Willie Simons uh, Trail. But uh, this, this was an area that did a lot of traveling over the years, you know. Now, I might have missed it. Uh, yeah, I think I might have. I think we've already gone past the... Uh, uh, there's a little tiny creek, a little tiny stream that crosses uh, the brook back there, and, or crosses the trail, and that that's a really good spot to get a good drink of water, you know? And normally in, in the fall, anytime you pass by that, that brook, you're going to stop and, and uh, get a drink right there, for sure. Godel's Brook is another good spot for a drink. But if you get the chance, walk up Godel's Brook to where it comes out from underneath the, the mountain there. A couple of snowmobiles are going to come across here there. And this is going to be, this. well this is the last week definitely for traveling this trail, this section of the trail, you know. It's, uh, the snow is going fast now. On the lower 
in the lower elevations like like we're we're traveling here. You can see though know, the banks on the side. You know if the if the trail wasn't groomed, you you might get another few days out of it. You know. But when the snow starts to go, the snow starts to go. And there's not much you can do about it. Definitely see where the, the groomer cuts cuts down and to level it out, you know. And so is just removing some of the snow off the trail, but it gives it gives people better riding. You can see there on the left hand side. Now you can see Willie Simon's bar. south side of Billy Simon's blog here and there's a couple of different directions if you take the uh, left the left trail there that would take you up to Zedry White's old camp and uh, Ed, Ed Swire's old camp and uh, up and around behind the uh, whales back there's a, there's a few more camps now up, up in that way you know Clint has a, a camp up that way never been down to Twins Camp. These are cabins that weren't there, you know, when, when we were traveling. There was no roads, uh, like, when I first started coming up this way, there was no roads to get you up here. We had the old trail. Uh, the dump road ended up at the old dump, the lower dump. That's where it stopped, you know. Then years later, uh, they built a road up to the, to the new dump site. Well, before it was the new dump site, the aunts had a sawmill up there. And, and years later, many years later, they, they put the, what was called the new dump. And now the new dump is even closed, you know. But yeah, we, we were traveling this, this area before, before there were roads. Over there, underneath the mountain, the, the, the bigger, whiter strip you can see going out, the bog going alongside the mountain. That was Jim Penny's mesh, and when we come down in this hollow and break up on the next bog, that'll be Mary Marcellus's bog, and that was named after one of my ancestors. That is the bog that uh, my grandfather has as a uh, cabin on, or had a cabin on, the, the remnants of that cabin is still there. Yeah, I did a video years ago of me going up and finding the grandfather's old cabin. But now we're on Mary Marcellus's bog, and we're on the northern, northern section of it, you know. This is a very long bog. I'd say when, where that trail breaks out is probably about at least two-thirds of the way up the bog. It's a long, narrow bog. That right now, he's, that screw tracks you seen there to the right. That now we're on what was called Harold Simon's Trail, and Har Harold Simon's Trail will take you right on back to uh, to Walesback Bog and uh, and the old trail, and it would take you all the way on up to Harold Simon's uh, Bog up by where Harold Simon had the mill. So we're still on uh, Mary Marcellus's bog here and, and heading north. This was a way that they would travel before there were roads to get into Fox Island River. They would come over land like this and go up there and catch their salmon. And uh, they would, they would uh, dry and smoke the salmon so it was lighter to carry. And when they had all they could carry, they would head for home. They would go up there. They wouldn't take no tent or nothing. They would uh, make uh, bow lean twos and sleep in that and make their own smokers and stuff. And yeah, they would smoke and dry the salmon and then pack it out, you know. Whatever they could carry. Taking the old pack boards that they made with uh, canvas and and uh, wood chisel or yellow birch.
I actually uh, took my sister up for a drive here. Dude, this is just beautiful, beautiful country, you know. Seen an awful lot of moose in here over the years. Hunt of ptarmigan. Up here. The Groom Trail, uh, and Harold Simon's trail is off to the right of us now. We, we, uh, we're exiting over on the right hand corner of the bog and we're in exiting on the uh, left hand corner, you know, on the north side. Hard to believe the difference though from, from today and, uh, and on Saturday when Sean and I were, were going to walk through here. And, you know, how much snow it had melted. We'll soon hit a section now and across this little uh, bog lead here. We're going to get into a section of alders. We're going to take a little left hand turn right up here. You can see it's, it's coming up. And uh, I'm going to have to slow down here because I got the camera mounted right to the bumper of the the tundra and I don't want to whack any of the uh, uh, alders here off the off the uh, off the camera you know but this here there, there's right here where we're crossing over that now that's about nine inches high now all those little uh, alders that were cut there and it's nice just Picking your way through and following the bog leads up, you know. This is this is an area that my dad he spent one full year up here in the woods, uh, hunting and, and fishing and trapping, snaring, and catching food to to bring home to to the family, you know, picking berries and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, the mokok and uh, which I think some people call squash berries. Partridge berries, big apples. It's, it's nice traveling this 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 land that you know I, I know that you know I travel it now, dad traveled it before me, his father traveled it before him. Great grandfather traveled up before me, and, and so on. We're gonna we're hitting another little bog here, um, and we're gonna break on down here to the to the left. There's a nice little uh, rustic cabin down here, log cabin. The boys are actually up there doing work onto it. I think uh, Pilgrim Pilgrims own it, but I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure. Like I said, uh, when when I started. Traveling and when we were traveling years and years and years ago, uh, there, were, there was very few cabins up here. And yeah, and it was before ATVs came out. They got a little sign on it, the moose shack, and definitely, uh, definitely a lot of moose would have been killed and, and hunted up in here, you know. But any time you, you build a cabin in an area like this here where heavy snowfall and, and uh, soft ground and, and stuff, you know, uh, it, it's going to settle in more in one corner than the other and you're, you're always going to be jacking up the cabin and trying to level it and, and from winter to winter and spring to spring type thing. Not too many more days and the boys won't be able to get up here and, and work on the cabin, you know. Now we're gonna we're gonna cross this bog and, and we're gonna go through a little another little neck of uh, black spruce there and there's some some beautiful nice uh, dead standing timber dry wood you know what we call dry wood uh, but nice spot to see moose. I'm 
but the, the snow, the, the snow is getting so that there's not really a good bottom to it there now. But that's what you would do. You would go up and you'd make make circles and stuff, you know, uh, hunt different areas and try not to whack the uh, the camera off some of these sticks. But it, it's hard. <laughs> And sometimes I forget the camera's there, you know. Some nice try with here at all. Yeah, you can knock some of that down, split it all up, and make splits for starting fire. Yes, sir, a lot of dead standing. I wonder how many years they've been there, you know. Now this bog here, this one here is a it's a it's a beautiful bog. Once we get out here a little bit, we're gonna it'll crest on us, you know, and then you're gonna be able to get to see the uh, the Louis Hills and stuff. There you can see them coming into uh, the view there now. Four Mile Hill, Cash Hill. Rabbit Hill, the big level. Right on up to the catbox. But lots of spot to spot moose. Lots of places to spot moose in here and lots of places for the moose to hide, you know. Especially when you're traveling on foot because, you know, the, the bogs kind of taper off and you could be on one end of the bog and there could be a moose standing up. There could be ten moose on the other end of the bog and you're not going to see it because the crest, you know, the, the bog crest is like, hey, they could be uh, hidden underneath the slope of the hill type thing. Now we're just uh, wiggling our way down here through the, through the woods and we're going to come up to uh, Sean. Sean sold his cabin. He had his cabin... And he uh, ended up selling it last year. Before uh, he and I started uh, riding and, and together and stuff, you know. But this, this the way it was. You can just pick your way down through these bog leads and, and stuff. Very nice uh, way to travel in the backcountry. Now you can see uh, Kippen's Bog. You know the, the different uh, parts of Kippen's Bog there. This, as far as you can see. That was all area that they used to walk years ago, you know, from, from way back home. They would walk up and uh, spend the night in Grandfather's cabin, and that would be the launching point to, to come on up this way. And they spend another night up on the far end of uh, Kippen's Bog there. Well, about halfway up Kippen's Bog, I guess maybe a little bit more. And you, you come to a little bog on the right hand side. The road passes right close to it. And Uncle Steve had. Uh, had a cabin there, so they would spend the night in Grandfather's cabin, walk up to uh, to uh, well, Steve's cabin, and go from there, you know. But uh, they could do it in one day, you know, Dad. In one day, he carried from far into that bog, what you just seen, he carried 12 hours moose on his back. Yeah, his brother Tony had a quarter, Earl had a quarter, and Dad had half, I think, of uh, the moose they had got up there. And you might be able to see the cabin through the trees here. Hard to see with the with the GoPro. You can see it with the when you're driving in here, like hey. Uh, but the GoPro is not, uh, mounted on the bumper, so. And I'm I'm watching it now. I'm rewatching it and, and doing a voiceover as I'm looking into a little tiny uh, screen on on my laptop, probably about oh my gosh tree by five and a half inches, three inches by five and a half inches. So we stop here for, for a moment and Sean look, reflects over the cabin here and stuff that needed to be done to it. And we're going to break out here now. This, this little trail here is only a short little jaunt down to, uh, to uh, Kippen's Bog. My cabin site is is up to uh, up to the 
the left of, of where we're breaking over here now. You see a lot of moose here in, in, the, in the fall, you know? I like to the, the watch them in glass. Now, I, I don't know why they did it. I know why. It was a... The, the GoPro records like an 8, 8, 8.8 .8 minute... Uh, almost like 9 minutes of uh, video. And then I'll, I'll jump into another segment. And uh, when, I, when I hit the uh, enhance button, it, it just brightened it right up. This, uh, the segment. But we're, we're heading uh, in, a, in a south east uh, direction here now and then we'll be going almost due south down along there, there's a bit of water that that up on this end of it you know dad dad had got an otter up here one time he stepped onto it with uh, with his snowshoe and he uh, killed it with his shade knife stuck him in the, in the back of the head with the shade knife there and the, the neck joins onto the head he got 75 dollars for that uh, 75 or 55 I can't remember dollars for that for that otter you know, cut in here to a little log cabin here now this one this one's in higher shape I think uh, I think uh, it was geez, Gerard Doucette I do believe might be the first one to uh, the, the original owner the one, one who built this cabin many years ago you know but you can see it is like one this this section here, and the other section uh, is dropped in the middle. Like, eh? There's a good separation between the two. I don't know who somebody has taken over. Though they had a, a fair amount of wood and everything cut and and, uh, and put on uh, put on the deck there. You're not going to get to see that. Uh, way I turn around to skidoo here but uh, yeah somebody I believe got it taken over nice area you know uh, good for moose hunting and stuff I guarantee you yeah but it's nice nice getting out uh, Sean got a tundra now so it's nice to uh, this we've been out uh, since since this time, you know, and did a little bit more picking around. I got a little bit more video uh, in another area. We come across some uh, real fresh moose sign, and I, I don't like that, especially this time of year when the snow is crusty. We don't want to get the and Sean's Sean's of the same mindset. We don't want to get the uh, the moose moving, you know. But you see there, there's water here to the, to the left. And it, it goes down, we're following along the edge of it there. Yeah, we're still, we're still heading south. And we're gonna head south for a little bit until we go over and pick up uh, Carl Simon's trail again there. Then we'll follow that up and go up over, I don't know, geez, uh, Caution Hill, I heard Simon's Ridge, uh, Kippen's Hill. What other names have I heard on that? Oh, geez, yeah. Maybe. Well, 15 different names onto it. But th this is my favorite way to ride, you know, just take your time and, and crawl around. You're looking for tracks, you're looking for animals, and you're just going from uh, bog lead to bog lead. These little tiny connector uh, trails in between each uh, bog, you know, I... You can see the, the markers out there in the bog now, so... We're back uh, basically on the groom trail and 
Harold Simon's old trail, you know. Now, Sean, Sean had his uh, 22250 with us here today, and uh, we did, we did, uh, we stopped one spot and did, did a quick coyote call. And uh, but it was in the middle of the day, not not prime time for for coyote hunting for sure. We're just farting around basically. But this little section here, from the bottom of the bog up to where you start going up the hill, normally. In the winters, I'll see a fair amount of uh, coyote activity here. They like to come in and crisscross in this area. And of course, the moose uh, down alongside the hills here uh, like to yard up and, and they'll travel back and forth here a little bit in the winter. But see, uh, the snow was quite high there on the side. Eh? And the groomer, uh, <coughs> like I said, it, it knocks down a lot of the, the snow, you know. The, and it pushes the snow around to level up the holes and stuff. And I tell you, it, it's nice having those holes filled in, but sometimes it's at a cost of the snow disappearing a little bit quicker, you know? We didn't we didn't have much of a winter, yeah, but from from here now, from the bottom of the hill to down to the bog there. Uh tail end of Kippen's Bog, it, it, there's always seen coyotes crossing the trail there. You normally see, uh, you know, where two or three of them, uh, up to four or five of them, have been traveling through there. <clears throat> Pickle Hill, Pickle Hill is another name I heard on this. Caution Hill, Pickle Hill, Simon Ridge, uh, uh, Kippins Hill, Lord Jesus, like I said, there, there's, there's been a few, few names onto it. <clears throat> but anyway, I, I hope you enjoyed this uh, part of the video, and part three of the series coming soon. All right, and uh, so. Stay tuned for that.